Hey guys, Mixed Media Girl here. We are live. Um, so today we're going to paint this fun and easy little owl. This is great for all y'all that are stuck at home. So let me know where you guys are tuning in from in the comments there in the chat box. It's always nice. I'm in Los Angeles for anyone that doesn't know. Also, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And hopefully I gave you guys enough of an advance warning yesterday for what we were doing. The cool thing about this is you can use any colors, okay guys? So if you don't have these colors, I don't even have these exact colors I used on the original one, so I'm even changing up the colors a little bit. But you know, if you hate purple, use green instead. Or if you hate blue, use red instead. It really doesn't matter. You can use any colors you want whatsoever. And I'm just using Craft Smart paint. Like I'm not using anything fancy. So you can use any acrylic paints. I also urge you to, if you don't have acrylic paints, use something else. Someone sent me a picture of the last one. They followed along with some crayons and it was awesome. Okay. So if you have watercolor, do that. If you have crayons or markers, do that. Pencils, whatever. Oil paints, just follow along and have fun. Hey, Dana. Hey, Zandra. Hopefully I'm saying your name correct. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get started. I am giving people a little more time to tune in, but I do have three brushes. These are kind of the three brushes I use on a general basis for painting like this and teaching these classes. One is a one inch foam brush. One, this is just a half inch flat brush and then like a little detail brush. These are, you know, and I reuse them. I just wash them. But once again, use any paint brushes. I like the foam brushes because I find them easy to blend with. And I am reusing canvases as well because if I'm gonna do a lot of these, I don't wanna go through a million canvases. So that's awesome, Dana. Love to hear that. And guys, if you do enjoy this, please consider um, sending a tip through the PayPal link in the description. Let's get started. Okay, I'm using my foam brush and I'm gonna do the background with this. So I'm starting with some white paint. Now it's gonna be hard to see because this is a white background, but we're gonna just do a big circle. You can't go too big, you can go too small. So do it like pancake size, I guess. <laughs> Let's go with that, pancake size. And I am using purple for the background, but I'm using a different purple than here, just to let you know. So while your paint is still wet, the key to blending is doing it while the paint is still wet. I'm putting some purple on my same brush. Hey Chuck, welcome. And I'm gonna go around this. So this is where I want kind of my moon area to be. Um, so I'm gonna go around first and then I'm gonna actually go back to the middle with some more white and blend that out. That gives me some different colors there. Then you're gonna just fill in the rest with your background color, which for me is purple. But feel free to use any and all colors you want. So just going out to the end with purple. And please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. And also someone suggested that I read the question as I'm answering, so I will try to do that. Hey, Veronica. So yeah, let me know down in the chat box or in the comments if you're following along. You can also, of course, follow along later at your own pace and, you know, rewind or pause as needed. And you can come back and do this as many times as you want with different colors and stuff like that. And keep in mind, this is your painting. So feel free to just have fun with it. Do whatever you want. If you don't want to do an owl, Put a kitty cat there instead or something, you know? So my moon here, I did flip my canvas around, but it was a little bit, uh, it wasn't as centered as I wanted. So I'm going to just once again, go ahead and add some white to my foam brush. And I'm gonna go just in the middle and kind of recenter that circle. 
which you can do at any time as long as your paint is still wet. That gives us kind of that graduated look there. I'm going to do it one more time because why not? There we go. I'm happy with that. Now I can't see you guys, so let me know when you're done with this step, more or less. I'm not going to wait for forever, but then we'll go on to the next step because I don't want to jump ahead. Normally I have you here in person and I can see where you guys are at. So you're going to have to kind of let me know in the comments. Hey Judy. Hey Tammy. Plus it doesn't hurt to let the background dry a little bit before going on to the next step. So. All right, we've got people here from Pennsylvania. I know Judy's in New York. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead. Hey, Shelly. <laughs> I'm early. No, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. was the schedule. Hey, Art Mama, too, from Texas. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, I did announce it on Facebook. I made an event on my Facebook page, and then I also put it in the community tab on YouTube. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not Wednesday. We have a live tomorrow as well. I do a live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. This is, I'm doing some extra lives for you guys. Okay, next brush we're using is the flat brush and we're going to make the tree branches here so we're just doing this with black and my kitten is playing so if you hear that's what that is <laughs> all right I'm going to start here now with the tree I'm going to tell you two important things one is while it kind of looks like it's going in the middle here it is touching just like the bottom of where my moon is because I want my owl pretty centered. So keep in mind where you're putting that. And then also um, with trees, it's really important to start small. You can make it larger. It's very difficult to make it smaller. So using just the thin edge of my flat brush here, I'm gonna start over at this side and make just a black line that kind of curves a little bit here. And that's it to start with. <laughs> oh, hello from Canada. It should be pretty easy to catch up at this stage if you did want to, but you can also, of course, always watch it later. All right, now I'm going to very slowly, this is my main branch here. So just very slowly make it, this a little bit wider. You do not want a straight line. So if you cannot draw a straight line, this is perfect. Because you don't want a straight line. Branches are not perfectly straight. They're kind of jaggedy. So get creative with it. Have some little jaggedy in there. Okay, cool. Now keeping in mind your owl is going to be right here. So you do not want to put any branches right here because otherwise you might have a branch going through his head or something and that's uncomfortable for him. So <laughs> I'm going to put a big branch that starts over here and is going to go above where he's going to be sitting. Same thing, start small and then make it a little bit bigger. And I'll put a few extra ones down here. You can put as many as you want, wherever you want. Keep in mind though, you can also come back and add more branches after you add in the owl. So don't overdo it at this stage. Just kind of put some main ones in there. And we'll add our owl and come back and do more on that as desired. All right, I'm going to give everybody just a minute to get caught up on that. And while I'm doing that, I will grab the kitten so she can come say hi. Because kittens are adorable. Come here, little turkey. <laughs> she is like extra crazy playful today. Say hi. Right here. Over here. Doo -doo. Boo -boo. <laughs> I wish 
could show you guys Rusty, but he's kind of lazy. He just sleeps on my bed all day when he's not <laughs> wrestling with a kitten. I think she tires him out. All right, kitty, go back to playing. <laughs> Has the computer showed the kitty yet? Not yet. No? Nope. <laughs> my computer is also totally on a delay. <laughs> okay. So let's get started on our owl. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah, she's gotten so big and she is very healthy now, which I really appreciate everybody that helped me get her through that when she was ill. Because she was. Okay, Shelly is asking what kind of paint. I'm just using um, Craft Smart acrylic paint, but you can use any kind of paint that you have. And you can use any colors you want. I'm using purple and blue as my main colors for this with um, a little bit of yellow and then white and black. All right, so we're gonna go on to our owl here. I'm gonna have him right here. Same thing, we're gonna start small. So I just rinsed out my flat brush and I'm gonna go in here with the blue and I'm gonna just start with a circle. We're going pretty fast, so my background is still wet. So that's gonna affect the color here. But I'm basically just making a big circle, starting small and then making it a little just bigger gradually. Once again, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You can make your owl as big or as fat as you want. And you can also put multiple owls in here if you wanted to. We want the uh, bottom of the circle to just be touching the top of your branch there. That's kind of a key thing. Don't overlap it and don't have your circle hovering in the air unless your owl is about to take off, in which case go for it. <laughs> There's no rules. Um, Judy, if you, a blue owl, it could go well with um, really any color. If you're using red, you're gonna get a lot of pink, um, but it could look cute with yellow. It could even look cute with black and white. You could just do a black and white background and then that blue would really pop. Yeah, so sorry, I'm supposed to be repeating the questions. So Judy said, I want to do a blue owl, but not a purple background, any suggestions? I'm gonna work on getting better at that for people watching later. So I would honestly suggest a black and white background. I think that would be awesome. That's my suggestion, but this by yourself, you can take a little space between the steps and let things dry and that will help. So I'm just very slowly making my owl a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. This is a really cute fat guy. He's had a lot of bird seed or whatever owls eat, worms, worms, right? Tootsie pops. Okay. All right, I think that's good for that. <laughs> um, yes, you can totally use your hair dryer to dry your background. Sorry, Alicia said, can't you use your hair dryer to dry your background? Yes, you can. I'm not going to, but you absolutely could if you wanted to. I usually just go a little bit slower, but because we're trying to not be here all day. They eat bugs and rodents. Okay, good. So we've got our circle. That's as big as I want. I'm now going on to my little detail brush and I'm gonna add his ears. So normally you'd think just put two triangles, but I do mine a little differently because we don't want, it can actually be easy at this point to make it accidentally look like a cat. And we definitely want an owl. So I'm doing his ears a little bit differently here. Um, I'm gonna go off to the side and this is a really bad brush. I'm gonna have to get a new one, but starting from the side over here, not like in the middle, I'm adding a triangle. Wait, I'm gonna get a new brush because that one's really bad. Okay, this one should be good. So it should kind of seem like it's an extension of the side here is the point that I'm really attempting to make as opposed to just coming out of the middle of his head. So think Batman. Hey, 
and then try to make your triangles the same size. That can be difficult. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. Oh my God, the kitten is just going crazy. Okay. <laughs> so we have details to add into there, into the owl, but we don't want to do that when it's too wet. So it is very wet right now. Now that we know where our owl is, I'm going to go ahead and go on to doing some more of the tree branches. So using this same little detail brush, I'm going to just rinse it out real quick and go into the black again. And I'm going to go ahead and finish off the ends of some of these branches. And then just add some smaller branches in there. Once again, you don't need straight lines. They can be all jaggedy. And there's many ways to do tree branches. This is just how I like doing them. A key thing with the tree branches too is make them fatter and then they should go skinnier. At least as best as you can. And on this one, you can probably see I added a few leaves. I'm not going to do that today, but feel free to do that if you want. It's your painting. You can add anything you want. Just getting some little branches. This is a winter owl, I guess. No leaves. <laughs> I'm going to go over some of my other branches because now that the background's dry, I can make it a little more, them a little darker. So yeah, normally it's a good idea to let the background dry before going on to the next step. All right. Yes, guys, just a reminder, please do thumbs up if you're enjoying this. I know you're painting, so you're not really on the computer at the same time necessarily but please do that and also if you do like this um, tutorial please consider sending a tip or donation through the paypal link below okay i'm pretty happy with that it is really easy to overdo it on um the branches so i just try to keep it simple don't go too crazy Okay, so Alicia is asking any suggestions on how to end the tree branches off on the tips because mine were deformed from last night's paint or new session. That's a really good question. So it helps. Um, there's a few things that I kind of naturally do that I don't really think that think with that I'm doing. One is if you want thinner lines, you're going to use less pressure on your brush. Thicker lines, you can use more pressure. So even using the same brush, you can get a thicker line and then less pressure and you get a thinner line. Also, the easiest way to end off a tree is in um, V, as you can see here. So there's a difference between, um, I'm gonna show you on the back of this canvas. If you stick with kind of the same lines, you will end up with what looks more like a cactus, if you see that. So you want them to be a bit thicker and then thin out. Okay. And that applies to all branches, not just your main ones, even the little ones. So I hope that helped answer some questions. Um, I'm still waiting for my owl to dry a little more. So any other questions while I'm waiting for that before we go on to the next step? <laughs> Dry, dry, dry. Okay. So Alicia's asking, does it help to use a liner brush instead? Absolutely. So this is, I think, a size zero brush. So any, just any really small brush <laughs> um, that you can go really thin with. You could also, if you wanted, I mean, it's cheating, but there's really no cheating or rules. You could go back in with a black paint pen 
later on and make some smaller branches as well. So that's definitely something that you can do. <laughs> Judy says, that looks like my drawing of stick figures. <laughs> and Veronica says, thank you so much for the tutorials. You are welcome. Okay, we're going back to our owl here. So I'm gonna stick with this small brush for the rest. So I just rinsed it out again. And I actually need a little more white paint on my plate. So we're going to make the eyes. Now for the eyes, you want to make two circles with just white. And once again, make them as big or as small as you want. I find that bigger circles look cuter, at least in my opinion, but you can do small as well. So same thing. I start small and I go bigger. And in the end, I have them touching in the middle or at least really close to touching. I know it's very hard to paint circles, even for me. So just do your best. If he ends up with two wonky eyes, that's okay too. Your owl maybe just didn't get enough sleep or something. <laughs> just go with it. I'm just going around in a circle, making them as good as I can. All right. Okay, Tan Tana, hopefully I'm saying that right, says, have you ever added extra branches leaves from the top? Um, you can, you mean like adding like an additional branch? You totally can. You can add as many branches as you want. If you, are, if you imagine a tree on this side, you could also have another branch coming this way um, and you can, you can go crazy, go to town with it. You know, you can also add an actual moon in there, all kinds of things. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, some of these things do take practice, like in branches or something that definitely takes practice and getting things centered the way you want. Even for me, even doing this same painting probably about a hundred times now. I've messed up a few times. So. All right, I'm going to grab another bottle of white over here. Well, that's convenient. Cool. I just need a little more white. Okay. So now we're going to do what will be the feathers, per se. So for that, I'm going to add, well, this is the wings. I'm going to add a line here, kind of like if you have a I think this is a tennis ball, right? Or a baseball. Okay, so lines there, that's the wings. And then we're gonna do um, the kind of wavy line, the ripple line here across. And I do three rows. But if yours fits less or more, feel free to do that too. I've had it sometimes where it's less. And sometimes where it's more. There we go. Excellent. And then either rinse your brush off or wipe it off. We're going to add the beak and the feet. I'm going to bring you in a little closer because I know we're getting small details here. So camera is going to shake for just a second, you guys. Close your eyes. Bear with me. I'm going to go as slow as I can. <clears throat> There we go, okay. My friend Jason is over here, in case you hear a random person in the background, because we were doing some filming earlier. <laughs> you can say hi if you want. Hi. <laughs> Jason's funny. Okay, so for the beak, keep it very simple. You're gonna use some yellow and your little detail brush, and right under and in between the eyes, we're gonna add a little triangle. And then I have it go up in between the eyes there as well. So keep it simple. Don't get complex. That's literally it. <laughs> Tana says, hi there, voice. <laughs> A bunch of hi, Jasons. Okay. And then for the feet, also keep it very simple. Same thing with yellow. We're going to go on each side and we're going to do three yellow lines. 
that start from the bottom of the owl and go on to the branch. That is literally it. Three yellow lines. Do not get more complex than this unless you want to. If you're a pro artist, get as complex as you want. But there we go. Boom. Done. Simple, right? Last thing we need to do is finish off the eyes and then we're done. So I'm rinsing my brush yet again. And I'm going to go into my blue. So go into whatever color you did your owl with. We're going to add just some eyelids across the top here. And your white should still be wet. So it kind of mixes with that. That one mixed a little too much. And then the eyeballs are going to tie it all together. So for the eyeballs, keeping it very simple, flip your brush around to the back, dip it into the black. Where you put these dots is very important. Actually, let me just discuss this real quick. If you notice over here, the dots are both to the lower right hand corner. That shows you which direction he is looking in, okay? So if you put the dots right in the middle here, he's gonna be cross-eyed. If you put them centered, he's just looking dead center. You can have him looking down. You can have him looking wherever you want. This can kind of be cute if you put two owls and they're looking at each other. So all you're doing is dip, dip the back of your brush into your black and then you're gonna put one dot, dip again, one dot. Nope, that one came out a little wonky. And there's a lot of wet paint there. Okay. <laughs> but that's literally it. It ties the painting together there, right? <laughs> he comes alive now. So that is the end of our basic induction here. At, at this stage, you can add as many more things as you want. If you want to add some leaves, some flowers, some more branches, another owl. You want to add a bird flying the distance, anything that you want. It's your painting. Have fun with it. I do recommend not forget, don't forget to sign it. So I'm going to sign mine in the lower left hand corner here with my initials. Uh, you can also paint the edge of your canvas if you want. I tend to do mine black, but you could go around it with your background color. And there you have it. Okay guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to thumbs up. Please comment and let me know if you have tried this or are trying it or you're gonna do it later, how it came out with your kids, stuff like that. Um, I have been getting tons of photos from you guys on my Facebook page showing me the, the paintings that you guys did with the sunset sailboat and I love it. So send me those paintings, send me those pictures. And, you know, if you do it in crane or marker or anything else, I love, love, love seeing it. Please consider tipping if you can, and I'll see y'all next time.